Godzilla minus one minus color is in theaters now. This is a black and white version of the extremely good Godzilla movie that came out last year. You guys know I love this movie. I've seen it twice in color. It was one of my favorite movies of the year, my number three movie, in fact. And this review will discuss the black and white presentation, but it will also contain full spoilers since I never did a spoiler-filled review of this great movie. When it comes to black and white versions of movies that I love, Logan has a really good one. Mad Max Fury Road does as well, but I've never seen a black and white version of a movie and thought, well, that made the movie infinitely better than it already was, because usually that only happens to movies that are already great, when a film gets an official release in black and white, where they actually color corrected the film to be black and white. It's not that they just took a movie that was in color, found the saturation, and took it all the way down. They actually went in and graded each shot in a specific way to make sure that that black and white worked for every single shot that worked in color, and that is exactly what the director of Godzilla Minus One did. But it doesn't normally make the movie better for me. It's just something that I appreciate. It's a fun way of watching the movie, seeing if it has any kind of differences or affects you in a way that it didn't initially. When it comes to Godzilla Minus One, that is not the case. I sat there during the first 20 minutes of this movie truly feeling like I was watching a different film. And I do think it has something to do with the fact that the original Godzilla film from the 50s was of course in black and white. And this movie being the closest as like a sister or a cousin to that film in the entire franchise, it feels like it exists within that world and is enhanced by the black and white. In fact, the director was recently quoted as saying that he found this version of the movie scarier and I'm inclined to agree. It's not just that it's black and white. You can tell that there's been a little blur perhaps added to the shot to take it down a bit. Some grain maybe added that wasn't there before. I could be talking out of my ass, but I've seen the movie twice in color and it, I'd noticed these things. All of these enhancements enriched the experience and made it feel like I was watching a sequel to that original Godzilla movie just with infinitely better visual effects. I think something like this is gonna be really amazing for fans of Minus One, as well as hardcore fans of movies in general who love the idea of seeing a film in a different way but I don't necessarily think it's going to have much of an impact on your everyday theater goer. The reason I say that is because of an experience I had the first time I saw Godzilla Minus One that I didn't share with you guys because honestly, I was ashamed. <laughs> Let's talk about it. When I saw the film for the very first time, it was in XD at a fan event. It was like a day before the movie was supposed to come out and it happened nationwide. And when I went into the theater, an usher said, here's your 3D glasses. And I was like, it's in 3D? I didn't know that. And he went, yeah, apparently it's uh, 3D. The manager told us to give everybody glasses. Disappointed, I sat down and I put the glasses on before the movie started. I say disappointed because I pretty much had it with theatrical 3D. I'm not into being forced to watching movies in 3D. I like having the option. I'm glad that people who like 3D can generally pick like one showtime a day and they can all go to it and have fun and watch a 3D movie. I don't want to do that. I want to watch a movie in 2D. So I sat there with the glasses on, the movie started, and about 20 seconds in, just like a few shots, the plane is literally landing on this island, and I'm like, this is not 3D. I take the glasses off, yep, nothing changes. Put the glasses back on, yep, nothing changes. Take them off again, leave them off for a few minutes, and I'm like, yeah, this is not a 3D movie. About 10 minutes later, I was sitting near the bottom of this theater, I turn around and I look at all the audience members behind me and every single one of them is still wearing their 3D glasses. And they all continue to wear their 3D glasses throughout the entire movie because somebody handed them the glasses and said this movie is in 3D. Not a single person in that theater noticed that they were watching a 2D movie with what amounted to be sunglasses on. That's why I say I don't know if black and white is really gonna do anything for your average movie goer. <laughs> And that's why I say I was ashamed. Because I sat in that theater thinking about how often I say that audiences need to be respected by filmmakers and how smart modern audiences are looking at a bunch of people wearing 3D glasses for a movie that was definitely not in 3D just because somebody told them it was in 3D and nobody noticed. That disappointed me a lot, I have to say. Pushing that story aside, this movie holds up immensely in this format. I really do think that it enhanced it 
and made it scarier and made it feel more intense. And I could also happily sit here and say this is the first Godzilla movie to ever be nominated for an Oscar, in this case visual effects. I think it could go even farther than that into other categories, but I'm just going to not complain today. This being my third viewing of the movie, I can finally confidently say that it is my favorite Godzilla movie. The first time I saw it, I was like, this is definitely one of the best. Second time I was like, yeah, it might be the best. Third time, yes, this is the best Godzilla movie ever made. I think it's absolutely fantastic in every way in that it presents sympathetic characters, a hero who is viewed as a disgrace and a coward who is suddenly taking care of a child that isn't his own, who's falling in love with a woman who's also taking care of that child. It's not her kid. His parents died in the air raids. Everyone views him as a coward once they find out what he was supposed to do but decided not to do. And his character's journey is so well-crafted in that he gets opportunities to slowly come out of that slump, like taking a dangerous and very risky job on a boat in which they collect mines that are laying at the bottom of the ocean. That's his first step out of that cowardice. And then facing Godzilla on that boat, looking at his shaking hand and still grabbing the gun and firing. He gets so many opportunities to take one more step forward towards redemption, ultimately of course towards the end of the movie when he does fly into Godzilla's mouth, blowing Godzilla's head up. Now I have heard a few complaints from people that him surviving that blast, as well as the miraculous reappearance of the woman that he's fallen in love with, takes something away from the impact of the story. I have to strongly disagree for, for a number of reasons. The most important one being that in the middle of the movie, he states that he's ready to try to live again. He looks at his parents' uh, shrine and says, maybe I can try to live again. Then Godzilla immediately attacks the city and his attempt to restart his life is thwarted. So he already stated that he's ready to move on from this tragedy, from the disgrace that he feels. So at the end of the movie, when he's given an opportunity to not only face Godzilla, which is something he was not brave enough to do before and has taken steps to do throughout the middle of the movie, he faces Godzilla, but also is still ready to live again, just as he already stated. So that works in spades for me. Her miraculously coming back to life at the end of the movie, I get why some people might be bothered by that, but I really do have to say, do you really want this poor little girl to be orphaned essentially a second time? I don't. This poor child is drawing pictures of this man that isn't even her dad and just wants him to love her. It's so tragic and heartbreaking. I want that family that's not really a family, but really is a family, to be happy in a Godzilla movie. Once again, this movie is good, man. So do I think you should see it in black and white? If you're a big fan of this movie, I absolutely think you should give it a shot. I think it really does add something. I think it made it scarier. It made it feel, like I said, as if it was almost a direct sequel to that original 50s movie. I really think it added something and I hope you guys check it out. It's such a phenomenal movie. I hope that they release it on Blu-ray with both options because I would love to watch the color version again. I'm sure I will, but I also one day might want to rewatch this version too. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.